Hey, so really quickly, I wanted to kind of dive into that uh, the Sears Act or something like that with the Representative Nakima from Georgia and Don Young specifically from Alaska. Obviously, that's why I am uh, I am kind of perked up and interested in looking into this thing is just how it seems like a, a, a tactical move towards socialism and it seems unnecessary and it seems like it's a reactive thing in light of all the shutdowns with the COVID-19 in terms of the schools getting shut down, specifically what the CARES Act basically is. It's sort of trying to push child care into an infrastructure thing like schools where the government, federal government pays for people's child care. And it, it seems like a baby step again towards communism, towards socialism. And it also just seems unnecessary. I think we really want, uh, you know, free market forces. We want personal choice. Young parents want to be able to choose if they've, if they've got one of the one of the people uh, at home part of the day, they can take their kids, or if they want to, you know, where where they want to send their kids for childcare. They want we want to preserve those abilities to for young people, uh, young parents, parents period, to sort of navigate and make their own choices. The people there in the childcare places that they're comfortable with, and not have the federal government funding potentially bad programs that are just like, you know, schools where all the things we find with schools are pretty much anything when the federal government gets involved, it becomes so big and uh, it becomes it becomes something where it's it's harder to actually you know, potentially it becomes inefficient and ineffective. For instance, again, talking about like the native corporations in Alaska, which get tons of money from the federal government, right? And we know for a fact that, you know, we have native corporations. Some of these CEOs have a $5 million a year annual salary. And yet that federal money that is sent is not getting, reaching the people who are in need. Uh, and I'm using that as an example, but there's also like Andy Tuber, you know, people who are getting a $1.5 million salary, but there's a trend in a pattern where it's almost like a medieval thing where we've got kings with these native corporations, tons of money. And is that going to actually um, ripple down and be a, a parallel and a similar thing to what would happen with this CARES Act where we have these healthcare things that they're capturing this federal money and you know your CEO for your uh, not not healthcare I'm sorry your uh, your child care things and, it, and your CEO of your child care monopoly business franchise or whatever is all of a sudden making a big chunk of salary and the money's actually not getting to the kids you know and not getting to the uh, and not getting to the uh, and not actually really working for you know, alleviating the stress on working parents, which I think is potentially the intent of that act. But specifically, also want to talk about that Juno uh, article, Juno Empire article, which which is talking about how there's allegedly, and there's no real evidence because we're just we're not having an independent study, right? We're just having a, a, a one one uh, one child care thing saying that they can't find staffing, and then another one says we've got a big waiting list. But of course, they would have a waiting list, and they're probably not having trouble with staffing because of COVID, right? Because all the schools are shut down. So the working parents who tr traditionally, typically, during the workday, hey, here, wait a second. Uh, I got to go. My dog is ready to go. But, but uh, during the workday, they typically would dump or send their children to the 9 to 5 to school. And since COVID shut the schools down, those same working parents, all of a sudden their schedule was really challenged. The ones that were their work also wasn't shut down. And they were and they had they had nowhere to send their kid. So that is why I think that that, that waiting list for those child care places in Juneau uh, probably increased dramatically over that time during COVID when it happened. Also, I think it's probably hard to find people to work in child care during COVID because just like any other job, the ramifications of working during COVID, especially with a bunch of kids, Kids, potentially transmission for, for COVID-19. People don't want to get sick. And also there's obviously, uh, you know, government funding and alternatives for people to stay home and also just mandates to stay home. You know what I mean? A pressure to stay home uh, just to be safe. So, so to try to bring these issues up and make this baby step, which is actually not really a baby step, but it actually comes into fruition, uh, this monumental step towards making childcare infrastructure in this country, it's a socialistic thing. It's not really aligned with our values. And I think it's something that we're looking at specifically at Rep. Don Young in Alaska authorizing this thing. It's a very, very insubstantial, measly three pages. There's no substance to it. It doesn't bring up the issues of what's a good you know, child care program and what's a bad one and why would the, you know, and all these other things. Uh, and it doesn't, it's very easy to challenge that. And I think it's easy to challenge that in light of Don Young's other moves where, you know, he's just been there so long and it feels like he's very much a Democrat. You know, he's really left the Republican party. He's kind of, he's veered so many times away from conservative values. And that's what I'm talking about this. You know, he's got a, a picture on his, uh, his campaign trail, him shooting a gun off, but that, that is a hollow and meaningless thing in light of him making this move for socialism by, uh, co-authoring this, uh, serious act, C-E-R-E-S with, um, uh, Rep. Nikima out of Georgia. So I think it's a very problematic thing because it's a, it's a big shift systemically for this country to get something like this, um, 
to move childcare into this thing uh, that's more like schools in terms of infrastructure. And I think it's a, I think it's a bad thing because, you know, say I'm, I'm a guy, I'm 20, 22 years old. I don't, I don't got a kid. I'm hustling. I'm working two jobs. All of a sudden my taxes are going to go up and I'm going to get, I'm going to have to bear the burden of the other, of the, of the people next to me who do have a kid and who, you know what I mean? Or vice or anything else. Like, and, uh, I'm not really sure that that's appropriate. Like, I think if you have a kid, we should make sure that we, we, as a society, as a culture, we place a, we place a great emphasis on personal responsibility. And if you do have a kid, you want to be the one there for your kid. I think, you know, anyone, I think you want to be the one there for your kid to watch your kid grow. You want to chaperone that kid and you want to make sure, uh, you're the one there who's face to face with a child care provider and, and comfortable and confident with that child care provider. We don't want to make this something where we're just like right from the, from the day. And that's what it is. It's a baby step towards that socialism from the day they're born to the day they uh, die in this country. It's going to be on, on government welfare, on a government, on a government paycheck. And I think that is again uh, just something that's you know Don Young veering away from the conservative values, and it's not really. Uh, and it's just not necessary because it's all in the context of this COVID and the COVID shutdowns. Uh, so I think I covered it all there. I'm trying to think if there was anything else that I really wanted to cover on that. I just think it's something where it's like these, these, uh, we want to be able to have the personal choice. We want to be able to, uh, you know, if the government's funding these programs, programs, you know, where's the oversight, where's the vetting for the good program, the bad program that would be eligible for, you know, f to be part of this quote unquote infrastructure for childcare. And then also just, you know, is it just basically alleviating personal responsibility so people can, you know, feel free to have kids and like, I mean, if they can't handle their kid, you know, that does happen a lot, <clears throat> you know, they can adopt the kid out or other things, but it's not, uh, you know, it, it, there's all kinds of grim situations like that all over the place. And I don't even, and I don't even think that this would uh, alleviate. Oh, these are the other thing I want to talk about was, um, so Don Young also in his, in his, in his press release on his website, as well as the Juno Empire article talks about a quote unquote child care desert in Alaska. And I think that, that is a, he's misusing statistics to move towards socialism and specifically, you know, we're talking about areas in Alaska where there just isn't much of anything, even in Anchorage, Fairbanks and Juno, for instance, the three principal and large cities in Alaska, comparably to like, infrastructure in the lower 48 there's just not much there and then the rest of alaska you know it's refreshingly remote and rural and isolated <clears throat> you can't find that and for instance like virginia where don young spent most of his time the last 50 years so um you know, there isn't a McDonald's there. And yeah, there is, there might be a basic school and a library, but there isn't, you know, there isn't a ton of jobs, you know, these are the hard truth. Or, and then usually the jobs that are there are very seasonal. So to try to, to try to say that there's childcare deserts, it's, it's again, it's misusing a statistic because there's just a desert of uh, infrastructure and development there, period. You know, there isn't much development in there in terms of like, uh, you know, jobs, there's not much of strip malls, you know, there's not Walmart. How many Walmarts do we have? we got three cities. we got like three Walmarts in Alaska. So, you know, in, in all those other areas there isn't much of anything so to try to say that that's holding people back or holding young women back from having jobs and, and, and stuff like that in all those other places now it might be something that is slightly relevant and true in those principal cities I, I could I could acknowledge that but I don't think uh, but again free market forces there's no reason some young woman who's in that situation or some young guy even or a couple couldn't start their own child care business right as an entrepreneur and try to fill the niche if there is an overflow of uh if there is a, a need for more providers and if there is an overflow of kids and they, can, they can't get into the one program is as, as these as these uh quoted people allege in that Juno, Juno Empire article. Now, my problem with that Juno Empire article, again, is there's not an independent third party looking at those claims that those, that those only two people made. So there's like, there's only two people quoted, you know, I don't see any verification or truth or, 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 or to any of that stuff. So it looks very suspect. It looks like basically propaganda to move towards socialism. You know, probably even the article itself is basically like a propaganda push by Don Young for this act. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he sort of engineered that article in Juno. And again, I just veering away from the conservative values, uh, veering away from American values, America first values, but just American values. You know, we want freedom of choice. We want independence. We want personal responsibility. You know, we want to be self-reliant. We want to build, uh, 
we want to build and program in those values to our young people and to, into our culture too. And again, there's, there's plenty of room for young people as entrepreneurs. If, you know, if, especially like if I had my own kid, I think I would be motivated to try to, you know, find other parents in a similar situation if we really didn't have a option for childcare. And I think we would be able to put something together on a rotating schedule or something like that, or even found our own little thing, uh, to, to be able to, to sort of solve that remedy, to create a remedy for that, that personal challenge. You know what I mean? So if we're just talking about, and again, you know what I mean? So I, th I think, I think it's good having the open, having like a free market forces, having the government come in and do something. It just doesn't work out that it doesn't work out as, is towards its intent time and time again, we see this specifically in Alaska. And again, just the idea of like, you know, these childcare be becoming something almost like a industrial thing, like the big schools and stuff like that. And you look at all the, you know, all the problems with the schools, uh, you know, so I'm, I'm just saying, I think it might, that type of CARES Act, I don't think it would work out towards its intent. I think it's flawed. It doesn't have any substance to it. And I think, you know, on so many different levels, it's something that is just not necessary in this day and age. We have so many pressing issues internationally and nationally that trying to make childcare infrastructure, it's a, it's a pure socialist move. It's not at all aligned with what Don Young campaigns on or, or the party that he's part of. And I think, you know, again, I think there's a lot of stuff that Don Young does great and he does correct uh, in terms of, you know, his choices in terms of legislation. But this is a big red flag on him, you know, and there's other things that are a big red flag on him too, you know, and again, he's been 50 years in Virginia. It's the conversation of term limits. Is this guy, uh, I feel like he can do whatever he wants. He feels like he's not going to get challenged on these type of decisions, you know, and, and maybe in Georgia, in a very urban area, something like this would resonate and make sense for a tremendous amount of people who are working like fast food jobs or minimum wage jobs, young people who have kids. So, but I think that is, uh, you know, in that type of environment, I don't think the federal government needs to step in and just be taking care of all these kids. I mean, again, there's like, if you've got a kid, the other person who you're working with, like if you're working at, uh, you know, you're working at McDonald's or you're working at a Walmart and one person's got a kid and the other person doesn't have a kid, the person who doesn't have a kid shouldn't be paying for the other person's kid. They don't got the kid. You know what I mean? It's like, I mean, it's, it's, it's the hard truth. Uh, there needs to be, there needs to be a personal responsibility towards having children and, you know, it does, it probably costs money and there's probably a lot of rewards that go along with it too. But if we're going to just all of a sudden take that away, take that away from that process of, of, of raising a child and putting the price tag and putting all of the, uh, all of the, all of the details and the logistics and the economics on the shoulders and the back of the government and on every other American who doesn't have that kid. I think that that doesn't make any sense. You know, again, it's that move towards socialism and it's, it's just a, it's a problematic thing for our country because it's all in light of this COVID stuff and this COVID stuff is, uh, you know, if, if this, this is the last thing I wanted to point out and I put it on Twitter, but, uh, so if the government's shutting the schools down, right. And most of the businesses down, but then we're going to make an argument that childcare, uh, childcare is going to be open and, and that working parents can still dump their kids at childcare. That doesn't make any sense. Cause if the schools are shut down, to try to stop transmission of the COVID like they were leaving a child, leaving a bunch of childcare businesses open or once if this act passed and all of a sudden those childcare businesses were actually, you know, there was actually some sort of unification and it was actually like infrastructure. I'm sure that they also in the same, in the same uh, way that the schools were shut down, they also would be shut down. So this makes no sense because it's a reactive thing due to all those COVID closures and the parents needing somewhere to dump their kids. Uh, and it, but again, also this, this just gets into the whole thing with like same sex parents, you know, and like, for instance, Julie O'Malley, who's a journalist in Anchorage, I remember seeing her tweeting during the COVID thing about having uh, nowhere to be for children. Uh, you know, and, 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 treat, and tweeting about childcare issues, but like this is she's she's a lesbian. You know, I'm not picking on same sex couples, but I'm just saying like, should she even have had? She's not a biological, uh, biologically capable with her partner of having a child. Should she even have had a child to begin with? You know, a couple of children to begin with. Where she's now at this point, she's a journalist. You know what I mean? She's not working a bricks and mortar job where she really she should be able to work from home and take care of her kids during the pandemic. I think, uh, and I think I'm, I, I part of the reason I kind of challenge that is not because I personally have something against her because she's part of that very left wing, very liberal. It's almost like a liberal activism group with the Anchorage Daily News that have been entrenched and they've been playing musical chairs in that city for different journalists, and they're extremely liberal and it's not aligned. Also, and they're very vocal too with how they program with the press and everything, the media, the population, the young people, but they're not at all aligned with the majority of Alaska's conservative values or just like the, the middle ground, the centralist values of independence, of free choice, 
personal responsibility uh, that I think, and also there's the self-reliance stuff that really goes back to the soul and the roots of the state of Alaska with the frontier spirit and, you know, building a cabin yourself, going out and being able to hunt and fish, not not always have that federal government over your shoulder chaperoning or managing, uh, you know, in theory at least, right? In this day and age, it's getting harder and harder to harder and harder to have that stuff resonate, I think, and achieve, and, and feel like you can, uh, you can achieve that lifestyle, but, um, especially with all these COVID shutdowns and everything like that, but my point is, like, are we just encouraging these weird, these, these, you know, I can use the weird word, but, you know, these same-sex couples to have these kids they shouldn't even biologically have, and, you know, there's no one there to, man, you know, and they're complaining, they want the government to take these kids now, I mean, this doesn't make sense, this isn't the right pathway for our country, you know what I mean, we need to be comfortable, and we need to be, I think, firm, and saying, hey, Don, you know, your time's done here, you know, I mean, Don might be a good leader on 99.9% of the things, but here we're finding him veer into a very socialist, liberal, uh, legislation path that doesn't resonate for Alaska. I don't think it resonates for Georgia or anywhere else. It might resonate for a minority of people in a very urban environment, but the majority of Alaska is not a child care desert. It's just, it's a beautiful wilderness and it is, uh, and it is refreshingly remote, isolated and rural. And that doesn't make it a child care desert. That makes it a place without a tremendous amount of infrastructure. And there's value in having places without infrastructure. And Don's from California, he's from Virginia. And he, he, it sounds like he wants Alaska to be just like California or Virginia with tremendous amounts of infrastructure and he wants the federal government to baby everyone from the day they're born to the day they die and I don't think that that is uh is something that we need to be signing off on and we need to be taxed and we should be paying for it doesn't make any sense uh on so many levels so really you know to sort of conclude I think you know this is this is a blow that's gonna is, that will strike down Don, Don Young's career because instead of standing up for American freedoms and fighting for American freedoms in this time, like like instead of taking a stand against like when Marjorie got censored from Twitter or taking a stand against uh, you know big tech censorship, you know trying to trying to unify the representatives on those type of issues. Uh, which are, I think, more momentous in this time and age, or, you know, or some of the stuff that's going on with COVID, too, but, like, he's just, it's like this petty stuff, it's like trying to keep this Alaska, the Alaska trapping thing, which is, which is, you know, or this type of thing, or, like, the Buffalo Whack, it's, it's like, it's like, it's like a kid doodling in the corner instead of standing up and fighting for American values, and I don't think any of the stuff that, that he's really, uh, championing and chaperoning in terms of the bills and legislation, it's really not, like, again, I think, I feel like he's, he's, uh, it's baby steps or socialism, it's trivial stuff, and it's not really fighting for the freedoms and really in tackling the big issues that are front and center with our country that need to be tackled in this day and age. So, you know, he might be someone who's been there a long time. He might be someone who's got a tremendous amount of experience, and I think all of those things are probably true and good, yet at this point, he's just simply not making the correct choices. You know what I mean? It's like, I got my dog in the backseat, he's 10 years old. Uh, you know, he's, he's been a great dog or it's like a veteran sled dog. He's been there forever, but there's a point where you need to put a different dog up and beat, you know what I mean? And, and that doesn't make that veteran dog a bad dog. That makes that veteran dog, you know, he's, he's basically, he's reaching his expiration tag as competitive as a competitive race dog. You know what I mean? You've got to get another dog who's going to go in there and he's going to be able to lead and push the pace and, uh, you know, get you through those checkpoints and get you through up over the mountain, get you through those challenges out there on that trail. And, you know, I really feel like I'm sort of that person. You know, I'm like that, I'm like that young dog who's like banging the harness, chomping at the bit, ready to go. And I'm not really sure, like, again, like this is the right time for me to uh, do this. Hey, here, you want to go to the park? Here, you want to go to the park? Hey, hey, come here, come on, you want to go to the park? But uh, we're going to take this dog to the park real quick here and take him for a run. But but I'm just saying, like, someone needs to get in there instead of Don Young. Don Young needs to acknowledge the fact that, you know, if he's doing, if he is going to be there another two years, he's got to make conservative He's got to be aligned with his, his his Republican Party and the conservative values, and this kind of thing is just it's so far off the mark. It's so it's so inappropriate in the in the context of the COVID shutdown there, and like it doesn't make any sense. Like if we're shutting down the schools, we're gonna shut down childcare too, right? So if you leave the little the the free market forces open and the free choice and everything like that, it's more likely that those childcare things are not gonna get policed. Also, you know so when when the schools do get shut down, so that the parents will actually have a chance to be able to send their kids to a childcare thing. So it's just like it doesn't make sense at all and i think it's a very a very problematic and troublesome thing for uh for specifically the state of alaska to see our our house of representative the dean of the house of representative make these socialistic 
communist tactical moves and, and sign off on this type of legislation that has no substance, no detail to it, and is so problematic. And what's a good child care? What's a bad one? You know, we're going to be the federal government's going to be funding this stuff, and it's going to go to huge salaries for executives, and it's not going to reach the working families and, and the actual children in terms of the good programs. And it's just going to become something that's, uh, you know, three people standing on a shovel watching the one person do something. And I think we're going to, regardless of any, if, if it was if it was signed off on. on and it did become some sort of infrastructure thing. I still think it would be something where you would have a difficulty filling the positions in light of the COVID, just like you have a difficulty filling positions of schools in light of the COVID in terms of teachers and stuff like that. And it would also be something where <clears throat> you would have a, maybe potentially a bunch of kids on a wait list. But I think, I think again, I challenge those statistics from that Juno Empire article. I think that's socialistic propaganda, uh, probably, you know, arch architected by... Uh, just specifically to try to get support from this bill and it makes no sense and you need an independent third party to look at those numbers from those uh, organizations there in Juno uh, that were quoted and I don't see any I don't see any facts or data to support that They're just a couple statements made by people who are don't have any <clears throat> don't have much credibility in my mind because I've never heard of them before